Fighter, you ready? Combate Global! Oh, what a punch! What an incredible fight! Can you believe what you just saw? We have a champion! First of all, to the head-to-head. -head. And again, welterweight, some of the bigger boys. 170 pounds, throwing it inside the howler. Two-inch height advantage for Alekin, and a decisive four-and-a-half reach advantage via the reach. Let's go to the howler and the voice, Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo tres vueltas división peso welter. We continue with much more action three rounds in the welterweight division. Los jueces son the judges are Byron Sellers, Richard Green Jr. y Héctor Gómez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 170 libras y media, his official weight, 170 and one half pounds, su record profesional. Tres victorias con una derrota, his professional record. Three victories against one defeat. Fighting out of San Jose, California, Ernesto Chingón Ancona. En la esquina roja, vestido de negro con rojo y azul. In the red corner, wearing black with red and blue, he weighed in at an identical 170 and one half pounds. Detuvo la báscula a un peso idéntico de 170 libras y media. Entra por sexta ocasión a la jaula con un récord invicto en cinco combates profesionales. He enters the jaula for the sixth time as a pro with an undefeated record of five victories. Fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Eric Alecki. El referee, Josh Rutgers. Josh Rutgers, the third Bring inside the howl up. We went over the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. Other Sorry. than that, touch gloves. Best of luck. God bless. Very sporting between these two. No one really ever has questions, but they're welcome to ask them. Like, what would be a question you would ask? Ready? Check his gloves. Ready? Check them, make sure they're legit. It's a good answer. We're underway. It is, I felt like it was family feud right there. <laughs> Ernesto Ancona in the red, already with a quick combination. Nicknamed Chingon, one of the great words. Alekin in the southpaw stance. Ancona, orthodox. Beat Daniel Sanchez August the 6th via rear naked choke in the first round. Speaking of Alekin to improve to 5-0. and He also beat Charles Decca April the 16th via a unanimous decision. So 2-0 and in his combate career. Did not fight in uh, 2020. As many fighters did not. It was obviously a difficult year, as you all know. Alekin pressed up against La Jaula, looking to reverse his position. Kona has him pressed up against the fence. Good head position. Nice underhook. Needs to be careful there not to get swept. Kona from San Jose, some roots in Bakersfield. He lost his unbeaten record in May of this year. Now a three and one fighter. And we're getting to see these welterweights here a little bit. We're, we obviously have a ton of talent in the lightweights, the featherweights, bantamweights, and flyweights. But this is a division, obviously, Campbell, I know combat they would like to develop. Oh, absolutely. I think everyone enjoys seeing the bigger guys. Uh, you know, we've got quite a few well, really talented ahead. fighters at 135, 145. Um, I often get asked, when are we going to find a heavyweight? A good think, question. Yeah. Remember that Goliath guy? He was a heavyweight. <laughs> like a super Goliath heavy. from Guadalajara. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good dude. These are big dudes because they're so lean. Uh, you think 170, but when you see them in person, they pass the eyeball test. Big lads. Nice straight left from Alekin. He's got some heavy hands on Kona as he closes the gap again. Absolutely, Max. Nice little sidekick there from Alekin. 
don't know if that happened in the fight or it may have been in a training. Did not see it right away. Alec Keane's got that little mouse on his forehead right above his left eye. Ooh. Nice 3 2 from Akona. Oh, big heavy punches. Coming in a little wild. Got tagged up by Alekin. But Ancona doing a really great job of pressing Alekin on the fence. He's, he's been there for the majority of the beginning of the first round. He's doing a real good job of keeping him pressed up against that fence. Nice pressure. Yeah, Alekin does not like this early pressure from Ancona. Big 170. Everybody made weight on our card here tonight in Combate Global. Not unusual, Max. Not unusual. I always like to report it. Just oh, no, hats off to thing. all the fighters. As JP knows, that's sort of the mark of a professional. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Make weight. You be a professional. Let's see if his submission game can come into view. But Ali King now with the underhooks knows he's got a load in front of him. Yeah, and it's really hard for him to position himself off of La Jaula. He's not being able to, to jog for position. Clearly, he's stuck. And he and An Ancona is doing a great job of pressing him up there. Nice pressure, nice hips. Alekin needs to use that underhook, continue to walk to his underhook let's side. Work, gentlemen, Jack let's it work. up to the moon. He's got to get off of there. Referee Josh Rutgers wants more work. And uh, we know the, these referees have a pretty short fuse with that. They will separate these guys. Stop, stop. And right, there it right is. Clean, right clean, still fight. Let's go. You like that, Campbell? Oh, you know I do. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's keep it active. And uh, that little sidekick has been pretty controversial in the last month. A lot of injuries come with that sidekick to that lead kneecap. People are, you know, battling, arguing. Is that kick legal? Should it be legal? Should they take that kick away? Because it causes so much damaging injuries to the opponents. Do you have an opinion on that, JP? Um, I don't like it. No, I don't like that type of kick, but, you know, it's you got to be able to defend it, and that's it. You know, if it bothers you, then do something about it. It was working for Alekin right there. Yeah. It got was. a little separation. But Ancona is doing such a great job of pressing Alekin up against the fence. He's literally not been able to go anywhere. He hasn't been able to transition to get into a better position. You know, if you're playing football, it's all about who controls the ball. Whoever controls the ball wins. And Ancona has been able to control Alekin and hold him there for the majority of this round. Alekin looking for a solid, perhaps, again from the referee, but he'll have to wait till the second round. We've reached the end of round one. We'll take a quick break and be back. Eric Alekin, a really cool customer, does look a little bit frustrated. The game plan for Ancona has worked as we get to round number two, our first fight of the night. There's that sidekick again, Juliana. Oh, Ancona, big. Big, huge big. punches from Ancona. You can hear it. And back to where they've been for the majority of the fight with Ancona's back on the cage. And those uh, little rabbit shots are, are annoying, but they're not going to stop the fighter from doing and pressing and, and trying to be the bully in there. It's not going to stop Ancona from continuing to press his hips and continuing to cage pressure Alekin. Alekin needs to make these adjustments coming into round two to, to get his back off of the fence. We said the story last time, but it bears repeating. Eric Alekin doing his civic duty when he was with his wife. They saw a hit and run. Told his wife, he went to the car, he saw a family there, a kid who was really rattled, told his wife, should I chase him down? As the guy drove off, she said, do it. Let's do some work in here, Joe. Tracked him down, justice was served. Well, the referee's trying to serve some justice in here. Yeah, this hold the gloves. Stop. Right there plane, right plane, it's still fine. Don't hook in. Not fine, Teddy. Alekin yeah. needs to watch these big, huge punches because Ancona is going to come in with a barrage of big, heavy shots in order to press him back up inside La Jaula. So he needs to be aware of that and stop him with these strikes. He's got great striking. He's very effective with that side kick, very effective with those leg kicks. He needs to keep that up and make Ancona respect his power and keep him away so that they don't get into the clinch again. We almost did it there. Does Ancona have to do more? Because he seems like he's relying on that clinch. Wait, get some shots in and then get back in there up against the cage. 
I mean, he's got big, heavy punches. He's doing everything that he needs to do. Alekin, on the other hand, needs to do something to stop him. There we go. That time he got away, and he caught a right hand from Ancona on the way out. But Ancona, again, presses. And finally, a finally, reversal. nice reversal by Al Alekin. Got away with that pretty easily. He's able uh, to maneuver uh, the, the bigger Ancona. Yeah, but as you can see, the bigger party, Ancona, put him right back up against La Jaula. And Alekin, again, stuck like a duck, not being able to move or improve his position. That's a Peñaism right there. Stuck like a duck. He needs to jack up that underhook and continue to walk to his underhook side. Thought Those little it. shots to the ear, they're annoying, but they're not going to stop Ancona, and they're not going to help you improve your position. And what's it? Do? I mean, what is, is he going to win the fight because the judges thought he was better at hitting the guy against the fence? I agree with you, Campbell. I think he has to be more active. That's a good sign for Mancona. Otherwise, just leaning in, I don't think that's going to do him any favors with the judges. Well, I will say that this is the longest uh, clinch fighting I've seen so far in the organization. Normally, they're already separated by now. Well, the ref separated Josh them twice. On. Yeah, he's separate. Actually, three times he's already separated them. So might have to think about a fourth. Ancona wedges himself in there. And as you, you know work. with MMA, after they make the weigh-ins, they can put some weight on, and Ancona suddenly did that as he wanted to be the heavier fighter for this very reason, to lean into Alekin. Beautiful knees from Alekin, and even though his back is up against La Jaula, he's still working. He's still throwing those shots to the ear. He's still ear-holing him. He's still throwing knees. He's still working. Shoulder strikes. Nicely done from Alekin to get some sort of offense going, even though his back is pinned up against La Jaula. And Kona, who fought in May of 2021, lost to Tyler Ray. That's his only defeat of his career. Wants to get back to the winning ways. And knows a victory for him against Alekin could do wonders. A minute to go here in round two, and everyone wants a little more activity. Back in the open. Watch out. No. He's coming. It's a weird matchup for Aleki. That was such a beautiful strike. Oh, beautiful shot. Drive. Yes. All right. It should be over from here, guys. He is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, Pan-American champion, Nogi champion. Oh, no. Nice reversal by Ancona. Nicely done. What was he trying to do there? He's wrapping that leg around. He's trying to get that leg right in. Interesting from Alec Keen. Some signs of life, and you could see the strength he possesses getting Ancona up and then down. Stop, stop, break clean. Another break, break clean. here. We're still fighting. Let's go. We're still fighting. Right We're still right fighting is always the, uh, the instruction. Switching stances, Alec Keen going into the orthodox stance. Big takedown for Alec Keen. Could do a wonders. We'll see what it means. Round three is next. Right back here for round three, and during the break, Josh Rutgers, our referee, said, I'm going to break up those clinches a little quicker. So the fighters have hey, been reading warm. my mind. That's good refereeing. Yeah. Made it abundantly clear. Big uppercut misses there by Ancona. He got a little blood on the bridge of his nose from Alokin right hand in round two. Comes in, gets in the clinch. And Ancona coming out of the world-renowned gym, a.k.a. and trains, I'm sure, with the likes of uh, Cain Velasquez, Luke Rockhold, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Daniel Cormier. There's so many stars coming out of that gym, and you got to just All assume wrestlers, that. Yeah, JP. you just got to uh, assume that he trains with the best of the best that there is in the game. Yeah, best wrestlers. Best wrestlers, and you're seeing that. He is definitely trying to use his weight, use his size, and try to wear his opponent down. Nice. Double underhook. Oh, and he's back on the fence. That was a nice attempt by Alekin. Both of these guys trying to work from the clinch. And Kona trying to get some sort of takedown, but Alekin is doing a great job. Beautiful takedown defense. He has not been able to let's work, gentlemen. Let's work. be taken down. So Ancona needs to, to get him down and, and finish this fight on the ground. Otherwise, the ref is going to separate him. Again, the question is, how much of this clinch and how is it viewed amongst the judges? There's that side kick again from Alekin. These guys looking to really 
plant the flag for welterweights here in Combate Global. You see some discoloration on that left shoulder of Alekin. Big swing and miss. If one of those catches Alekin, he's in trouble. Big swing and a miss, but he got what he wanted. He wanted the clinch. He wants to press him. He wants to be that pressure fighter who's pinning his opponent up against La Jaula. And although that's not technically the kind of fighting style that Combate is accustomed to, it's what Ancona feels he needs to do in order to win this fight. How is he winning the fight, JP? He's, he's smothering the guy, if but it's not even... Smothering sounds kind of lethal. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Yeah. Nobody wants any part of that. Like I said, in football, whoever controls the ball wins, and Ancona's been able to control Alekin, and Alekin has not been able to do anything. Yeah, that's true. But it almost seems Yes! Like but that's another takedown. He's had two. And oh those, I think, are going to loom large here with the judges. Careful with that knee, but that was a great job by Alekin. He got him down with that outside body lock trip. That was great. And he got the takedown. You got to keep him down. That just is a testament to how good Ancona is. He's rolling with the punches, and he knows what a scramble is like. Because even though he was taken down, he's right back to his feet Very and right quick. back in the advantageous position that he wants to be in, which is holding his opponent up against the fence and controlling and pressuring him. Another break, and it's Josh Rutgers promised he has broke them down. Now a minute and 50 to win this fight. It's very close. I, I sense, Juliana, you're leaning towards Ancona here with what he's been able to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely think if you're if you're looking at control and uh, cage aggression, he's the one who's coming forward. Um, I definitely think that he's been winning so far. But again, you never know what these judges are going to do. I just call it like I see it. I am not a judge. <laughs> Alekin didn't like that. That kick hits him in the midsection. He is in some discomfort now. That was a great kick to the midsection by Ancona. More activity from Ancona with that combination. Didn't really reach him, but it does a job. When he's got a hammer in that right hand, he's got a big hammer, but that was a nice body shot by Alekin and a beautiful head kick following it up. Oh, Again, it up. there's that knee, teep kick to the side of the knee, and those hurt. You can tell Ancona doesn't like it, and they go right back into the clinch. He's been clubbing in with those open hands on the ear. You can see that right ear is red, but it doesn't seem to be bothering Ancona too much. He's where he wants to be. And he's banging at that lead leg. And, and Kona needs to pick up that single leg. He's got to improve his position, get a takedown. One takedown here would be huge for one of these fighters. And it is Ancona who's attempting. But you can see, Alekin puts that center of gravity down, and he is hard to budge. 20 seconds to go. Welterweights clashing here in our Combate Global opener live on Paramount Plus. Fighters hear that just like you do. 10 seconds to go. Flurry of activity. Big nice knee into the midsection. He doubles it up. Oh my gosh. There's Swing a physical the strength of Ancona. My goodness. Should be interesting. Both fighters have a claim here, and we're going to take a break. And when we return, we'll get the official decision. Should be mighty close. Los tres jueces están totalmente de acuerdo con tarjetas idénticas. De 29 a 28, all three judges are in total agreement with identical scores of 29 to 28 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision a favor del vencedor por decisión unánime. Still undefeated, Eddie Alekin. Yeah, we're, all we're all shaking our heads here. I don't know. He's got the gambler's jujitsu shirt on his back. He's an instructor there. He remains undefeated. It wasn't pretty, but he will maintain that perfect record for the time being. We look forward to seeing him again. We look forward to seeing Ancona. Obviously, a little more action possible. Much more action coming your way after we take a quick break here. Elizabeth Schroeder, Maritza Sanchez. We'll get to the particulars, but now to the man in black, Lupe Contreras. Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso gallo. This bout, three rounds. In the Bantamweight division, los jueces son, the judges are, James Lazaro, Byron Sellers, y Richard Green Jr. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un 
Combate Global. En la esquina azul, vestida de rojo en the blue corner, wearing red, su peso oficial, 134 y 3 cuartos de libras. Her official weight, 134 and 3 quarter pounds. Su récord profesional, una victoria y una derrota. Her professional record, one victory against one defeat. Fighting out of Placerville, California. Maritza Sánchez. Su contraria en la esquina roja. Vestida de negro, her opponent in the red corner, wearing black, su peso oficial, 135 libras y tres cuartos, her official weight, 135 and three quarter pounds. Con un record idéntico, de una victoria y una derrota, with an identical record of that of her opponents, one victory and one defeat. Fighting out of Durham, North Carolina, Elizabeth Lil Bruzy Schroeder. El referee. Alan Abeles. Alan Abeles. Can't say the third man time. Protect cage. yourself at all times. You want to touch him that. up? Go ahead. Come out fight. Alan's a good ref. Judge. Yes. Rich. We like Alan. Judge. That was a nice moment Judge. between these two fighters. Big green, very positive between each Maritza other. Maritza looks so confident, right? She does. Fight, are you ready? ready? Fine, are you ready? You guys were asking as we're underway if Elizabeth Schroeder is Hispanic. I cannot answer that. I can tell you she's a turtle rehabilitator. Helps what? sick turtles and releases them back to the wild. The first of her kind on combate. Yeah, I gotta say, that is true. Less than 30 seconds in the first round, and they're already jockeying for position from the clinch. Juliana doesn't want anything about turtles. She wants to get into the fight. Hello. I appreciate it. Oh, bantamweight fight, ladies' fight. What more do I need to say? Maritza pinning up Elizabeth Schroeder on the jaula. Elizabeth with the whizzer. She needs to dig for that underhook if she wants to improve her position. Otherwise, Maritza doing a great job of keeping her pressed up against the fence. I think we saw, we saw that before in the last fight. This is an, but this is an active clinch. Oh, no, there. Schroeder takes her over. Nice little head and arm that helped her improve her position and great knees from Elizabeth Schroeder. But nice job. Ooh, no! Downstairs, upstairs. Schroeder maintaining a lot of pressure. Shot out of a cannon early on in this opening minute of round one. That is uh... something to rub you right the right way. You, JP, JP you, is freaking out. You by have the way. turtled up here. She's got a camera on her. She's got but her she hands on her face. Out. I think she's what did you see? I just hope that the girls, as uh, you know, uh, Nice, dainty women will be able to help the other fighter. No, she didn't help her. The judge, the referee maybe needs to step in here and help the want? wardrobe malfunction because oh, okay. uh, we're having a wardrobe malfunction. Stop. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Oh, top down. Ah, okay. JP on top JP. of it. All okay. right. Great. Okay, all right. all right. Nice body lock from Marita, and I wouldn't, you know, maybe that wouldn't have happened if Elizabeth didn't have the wardrobe malfunction, but Marita doing a great job of, of maintaining that control and keeping Elizabeth pinned up against the fence, but Elizabeth. Yeah, maintaining her I'm, dignity. Yeah. How about Alan Abella? She said, I need you to put your top down. Yeah, Elizabeth is uh, now. Bad intentions, thank you. Pinning Marisa up against the fence, using her knees, doing a great job in the clinch with those knees, staying active. And Marisa needs to dig for that underhook and improve her position. She's got the right idea. Sanchez, who went and studied kinesiology and international business, didn't finish college, but plans on returning. Nicely done by Marisa. Nice forearm keeping that framed up, but Elizabeth is able to jock again for her position and improve. She's going for a single leg, but Maritza is hip to the game. She knows what she's doing, and she's able to maintain her balance and stay up on her feet. They have been locked up for the duration of this fight. Now a chance to break up. A little tight clinch here from Schroeder as Sanchez is trying to unload with some shots, but just can't. Man, Elizabeth Schroeder's got some great knees from the clinch, though. She's doing a great job, and if she can get that head position down, down, below her hips, Marita's in trouble. But Marita's got a single leg. Look for her to pull this single leg out. She's changing to a double, locking her hands. Elizabeth's going for a ride. Sit down! Big suplex down on her side. And now Sanchez. Don't put your toes in the cage, some damage. Elizabeth. That right arm is over, maybe to protect it. She gets some wrist control. Beautiful job by Marita. Nice job by using her head as a weapon. Nice, beautiful head position. Stepping over that arm. 
controlling that le right left arm of uh, Elizabeth Schroeder, and now she's just framing out and letting it rain. Sanchez, a good striker. Her striking helped set up Lucero Acosta for the rear naked choke, and now she's trying to set up Schroeder, perhaps a similar finish. Nicely done, right the nicely the done by Maritza. Way to control her opponent. Good fight. Great uh, fight. It's a great fight, yeah. And they're, yes. they're using right everything they can right in this please. fight, trying yeah. to get any advantage. And Max wants to talk yeah. about turtles. Now just stay heavy hits like right I'm just kidding. That's, right that, right that right is right announcer right gold, right Juliana. You see that on paper, you've got to share it. Everyone loves turtles. Hey, Elizabeth needs to finish this takedown. There, nice knee, Scream from Schroeder as she drops those knees in. Corner is Ozish. Sanchez with a big left cross. Nice knee from Maritza. Don't put your fingers in the cage. Ooh, big knee from Schroeder. Use that body lock. Use that body lock. Thank you, Schroeder. Yes. And Maritza's doing a great job of wrist control. She's controlling yeah. that wrist of Elizabeth Schroeder. It's allowing uh, Maritza to not get hit by that right hand of Schroeder. And Maritza's just doing a great job of keeping her pinned up against the fence. We're going to reach the end of this first round. A lot to chew on for round number two. Even Stevens between these two. Sanchez with a superwoman punch. We'll be back with round two. Nice move, John. Towel, towel, throw me a towel. We are towel, back towel, here, towel. Uh, requiring a towel, a little wet spot there that was identified by Maritza Sanchez. You know, Alan. Um, he does it all. He does it. I mean, that guy's a really good ref. He's not as famous as Fight. Herb Dean or Beltran, but great ref. He does a great job. Oh my God! I love this fight. Yes, I do too, Campbell. That was a great spinning heel kick by Maritza Sanchez. And it looked like it landed. And they are back in the clinch, jockeying for position. I love this clinch. I mean, this is the kind of clinch you could watch and enjoy because it's fascinating to see where they're thinking of what to do next. Where is there an opening? And they're hurting each other on every chance they get. And Elizabeth Schroeder has such great knees from the clinch. She's been able to capitalize on those knees in the beginning of the first round. There it is. That's the position. Nice head position from Elizabeth Schroeder. Yeah, she's got there front and center with that forehead in a position that's just keeping Sanchez in a stationary position. Sanchez is going to get taken down here. She does. Sits her down, and that will classify as a takedown. And uh, Maritza might be trying to go for a guillotine in order to control uh, yeah, exactly. Schroeder, and if she does do that, she needs to nice. clasp her hands and, and yeah, put her hands underneath her armpit. Oh. Yes, thank you, she now she now gotta let go of that head. head. Get an underhook, girl. Yes. Get an exactly. underhook. Exactly. Not to get sidetracked, Campbell, but you were talking about there referees. I went to the Iron Maiden show in Los Angeles in 2019 with Mike Beltran. <laughs> that was a fun night. <laughs> a lot better it was. I got Bel <laughs> Beltran is a good guy. And with one. Iron Maiden and Beltran together, it was a good time. That's a good night. Good? I'm welcome. Ready? Any referee wants to go to Hard Rock show, there is strong. let's do it. Head, head, oh, and uh -oh. in the full mount, just like that. That referee can't get out. That referee stoppage completely changed the dynamic of Elizabeth Schroeder taking the mount here. She was having another wardrobe malfunction, and when the referees timed oh, him out to, to do that, that's what advanced her to the mount position. Is that on the referee, JP? Yeah, absolutely. That's on the referee. Oh, but then that's also a wardrobe. Joe malfunction what, what that was happening was again. It, no, exactly, it was either do that or we're gonna see some slipped, more. But she slipped right into the full mount. Exactly. It, it seemed a sudden. It, but she slipped right into the full mount because she got stopped from the rent. Nicely done by Marisa Sanchez. I mean, honestly though, it was either that or we were gonna see another horrible wardrobe malfunction. So it was a nice call by the referee, but it did get her mounted. Yes, Body yes, lock yes, takedown yes. attempt from Steve Elizabeth Schroeder. Great Take job by Maritza to jock for that underhook. Thank you, Nicely yeah. done by Maritza. That's the way to do it. Good. You can spin me when you're ready, Schroeder. Sanchez really persevering here. It was dealt a bad card there, but she got out of it. This Single fight leg. seemingly can go okay. anywhere. Single leg, pull it out. Yep, exactly. Sharp elbows yes. into the back. Great. Take down Sanchez. Single leg takedown for Maritza Sanchez. And this is a great position for her to be in. She is in full side control. Stay here. Glue your hips down. Be heavy. Nice crucifix type of position for Maritza Sanchez. Do not let her up, Maritza. Oh, Sanchez. 
This Elizabeth. is how she won against Augusta. Shake her off, Elizabeth. Shake her off. She's trying, she's but she's locked she's in. Trying. She's, she's trying. She's doing the rock kick, right? Yes. Yeah. Elizabeth slipped off. Oh, did a bar. great job of shaking her off the top. That felt like when you're trying to open a jar and you shake it and it finally opens up. Yeah, absolutely. Nicely done. Nicely done job by Elizabeth Schroeder. She shook off the monkey off her back, and now she's back in that double body lock takedown type of position, but she's got to pull her off the fence if she wants to complete this. Too late. Locked in. This is round two. We still have a third round if required. Neither of these ladies want to see it go that far. They've been extremely active, highly entertaining fight. Knee into the midsection there by Schroeder. Nice knee by Elizabeth Schroeder. She's got some great knees from the clinch. Very active in the clinch with her knees. Juliana, incredible. This is just the third fight for both of these ladies. They look like they've been in many wars prior to this. I mean, I'm telling you, I absolutely biased, but the 135 pound women's division is where all the action is. These are great fights, and both of these girls are really showing how bad they want it because it's just been a back and forth battle war so far for the first two rounds. Blue belt jiu-jitsu for Sanchez. Haven't really seen the jiu-jitsu game come into view here. Flying knee. Big right. Schroeder took it though. Schroeder gets out of there. Didn't like it. Combination Sanchez. Short left connects. All these punches are hitting now. Nicely done. Big beautiful left hook for Maritza Sanchez. She's got a nice left hook on her, man. Sanchez may have won that round right there. Still active. Schroeder slowing down a bit, but she'll make head. it to round three. Big dump right at the bell. Let's go. We are back here for round three. Maritza Sanchez, really a ho hum amateur career. It didn't really click for her. She kept working on her MMA. Big roundhouse kick in her first MMA fight, December 2019, lost to Christina Pettigrew. Massive improvement two months later in beating Lucero Acosta. And in the year and a half out of action, she looks like she's been working on her craft, Juliana. Fantastic second round and a good start to round three. Yeah, this is only her third pro fight. Her career is literally in diapers, but she is an excellent fighter. And you can see that the level that we have here at Combate Global is right up there with the best of them. She's such a great fighter. And Elizabeth as well. My goodness, both of these girls truly showing out and doing the most. And uh, I can already tell you this is going to be my favorite fight of the night. Oh, that's a good one. Even goes to the distance. People figure you need a TK or a submission. This one uh, is uh, chock full in 11 minutes thus far. That left hook and it right hook of Maritza Sanchez is lethal. That, lo that looked like they really landed there. Maritza's movements, she's very smooth, very athletic movements. Yeah, she's a good athlete, you can tell. She's tried everything with punches, several kicks, Elizabeth. tremendous activity. Elizabeth is tired. She's trying to get her bearings back together. She's got some nice knees from the clinch. She's got to be careful that Maritza doesn't come over the top. Beautiful head position by Maritza. Pardon me, Juliana. And you can see Schroeder in between rounds, breathing out of her mouth. That second round took a lot out of her. She's not dead here, but she must be looking across that howler saying, this girl just won't stop. Yeah, absolutely, but Elizabeth won't stop either. She's like the Terminator. She's coming at you. Not much behind that left hand for Schroeder. Sanchez responds with the left of her own. Nice leg kick by Maritza Sanchez. Again, inside leg kick for Maritza Sanchez, and Schroeder's coming forward, but she's missing. Beautiful movement, like Campbell was saying, by Maritza Sanchez. And Sanchez can take a, a risk with these big shots because it, she just gets back to center and is fit for the next one. Doesn't take too much out of her. Yeah, and Elizabeth is just coming straight forward at her too. She's not really moving her head that much. She's just no head movement, yeah. but maybe it's worse this round. Now she's backing up Sanchez. Schroeder's not out of this by any means. No way. No, still she's still dangerous. Forward. But Maritza body lock takedown. Take down. All right. 
beautiful job by Maritza Sanchez. She could feel that energy. She's getting, you know, crowded by somebody just coming for forward to her like a walking zombie. She just changed levels, ran the double leg, got the takedown. She's in half guard here, yeah. and this could be the end of the fight for Maritza Sanchez if she continues to pour it's it on. such a smart move, too. As she got control, she put her knee on that arm of Schroeder to take that away from her, and she has got control now of her opponent into side control. Right, and this has got to be the end of it for Maritza Sanchez. She cannot afford for Elizabeth Schroeder to stand back up. She cannot afford for anything to happen here except finishing her fight. She promised me in the interview she was going to have a fireworks fight, and that's absolutely what we have seen so far. It's a practical fighter, nonstop action. She could sit here and stay on Schroeder, but she keeps throwing punches. You can see she's from California, but she's got that Mexican flag on her back, so. Nicely done by Maritza Massive. Sanchez. Massive, Schroeder is in survival mode now. Keep it coming, Maritza. Finish the fight. Nice. Going for a half. Half Nelson. Elizabeth, hip to the game, scoots to the fence, uses the jaula to help her get back to her feet. That is yeah. a great job by Elizabeth Schroeder. The fence is your friend. Maritza it will help you. Sanchez has worn Schroeder out. Was great in the first round, a little bit taken out in round two, and now in round three, just looking to survive. And Sanchez says, I'm going to keep it coming from pillar to post. Well, the judges should uh, go in Maritza's direction, but I would love it if she could do something to finish. But she wants that. You can see that's what she wants. She has this fight. She's won this fight. Well, don't she blink. wants to finish. Don't blink, fellas. There's a little over 30 seconds left in this third and final round, and I can guarantee you you're going to see something great coming out of both of these women. Tremendous cardio from Sanchez. Looks like the fight just started for her. Body lock takedown. Another Sit down one. again. Outside trip. Beautiful job. Beautiful body lock by Maritza Sanchez. Sanchez. This is the part we love about combat that you see a relatively unknown fighter seize the opportunity, work on her craft, finish. look for the go. finish here. 15 seconds to go. Keep punching, keep punching. Killer instinct is there There's a submission in there. There's a submission there. Way to square up the hips and finish with a gigantic knee, Marita Sanchez. Oh, wow. Clinical wow. from Sanchez wow. got better and better as the fight wore on. Takedowns were there, strikes. Incredible. The numbers, the analytics support Sanchez's fight. Schroeder was good, a great fighter, but second best tonight. And we'll get the official decision now. Maritza Sanchez, remember the name as we go inside the jaula. El juez James to Lázaro anotó 29 a 28 a favor de Sánchez. Judge Lázaro scores it 29-28 in favor of Sánchez. El juez Sellers, 29 a 28 a favor de Schroeder. Judge Sellers scores it 29-28 in favor of Schroeder. Y el juez Green Jr. anotó 29 a 28. Judge Green Jr. scores it 29-28 in favor of the winner. By way of split decision, a favor de la vencedora, por decisión dividida, Maritza Sanchez. All right, split decision. I, 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 there's. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres episodios de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división peso ligero de Spout, en la lightweight division, los jueces son, the judges are, Héctor Gómez, James Lázaro y Byron Sellers. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red, su peso oficial, 155 libras y un cuarto, his official weight, 155 and one quarter pounds. Entra a la jaula por décima ocasión, con siete victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the tenth time as a pro, with seven victories against two losses. De Santo Domingo, Heredia, Costa Rica, El Changuito. Carlos Calvo. Wow. Oh, man. Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido de amarillo, is a pawn in the red corner, wearing yellow. 
Marcó un peso oficial de 155 libras y media. He registered on official 155 and one half pounds. En 14 combates. Mantiene un récord de 11 victorias y 3 derrotas. En 14 pro bouts. He maintains a record of 11 victories against 3 losses. De Bogotá, Colombia. And fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona. Javier Blair Reyes. El referee. Josh Rutgers. Josh Rutgers the third inside the howler. In, we went over the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, you can ask them now. If not, listen to me at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Do everything you can within the rules to win. Most I importantly, best of luck. God bless. Touch him <laughs> up. Back to the corner. Wait for the bell. <laughs> Folks, ready. this one Judge has ready. all the ingredients ready. for a wild one. Thanks in large part to that man. You know, I'm in such a better mood than when I got here. Yeah, fights do that. Yeah, fights do that. Calvo in red. He's trained with you in the past, Juliana. What can you tell us about Calvo and the way he approaches these fights? Intensity. Didn't you throw him out of your gym? We had a dispute, but the point is, is that he brings a level of intensity that is unmatched. He did win his last fight, and I know that he's got a bone to pick with Reyes tonight as he wants to get a clear and distinct victory. But you wonder, how much of that gas tank is taken out? How much energy are you expending being this mad, crazy, pissed off guy, you yeah, know? He, he extended, yeah. expended a lot of energy before the opening bell. Absolutely, and sometimes that's a little bit telling of how the fight is gonna go, look in my at, opinion. At, look at the opposite, Javi is so cool. Oh, and he gets with a good right hand. Let me talk to you about Javier Reyes. I remember watching him for the first time. This is his fifth fight with Combate. He lost the first two, he won the last two. He's obviously a good talent from Colombia, but he fought Colombian fighters. Good. He never got the training in the U.S. He's getting that now, and you can see it. Different guy. Yeah, it's, look, the scene in Colombia is developing. Okay. And, and training in Bogota is gonna give you an altitude advantage. But, uh, you know, it, Look, the training's better in the U.S. Double underhooks for Javier Reyes. Unfazed by the uh, the unorthodox approach well, and of Calvo. Pretty, pretty, pretty ballsy for Carlos Calvo too to be shooting him before the fight is going to start, especially if somebody from Colombia. I just think when I think of Colombia, I just think of you know cartels and scary oh, people and stuff uh, like that. Bogota is a fantastic My city. brother Betty and sister were born in Bogota. I almost was born in Bogota. So, so you were almost respect. Colombian, but now Almost you're Colombian, Cuban. instead born in Ohio. <laughs> Such a fine line. Juliana, my friends in Mexico City, when I ask if Mexico City's dangerous, they say, no, Chicago's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> They're right. Yeah, nah, Chicago's fine. Hey, it's everywhere. It just depends on where you're at. I'm sure you can find really bad yeah, parts everywhere. There's good everywhere parts in, in the town world. and bad parts. I go to Tijuana. There's a bad part of Tijuana, and there's a part of Tijuana that's very charming. Yes, so. Yeah, I'm, I, I stay out of the tough parts of South Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Double leg attempt here. for Carlos Carvo. Reyes, great dexterity and balance. Yeah. Look at that. Nice split stance there. That's a beautiful job. Great takedown defense. Going for the inside single leg, and he almost gets it. Carvo going again for the double. Shooting again, he's deep, but he's getting ear hold there from Javier Reyes, and that's not a good feeling. But it's not a game changer, it's not a, a fight ender. Carlos Calvo, known as El Changuito, 6 0 as an amateur, was 7 0 in his <laughs> MMA career, took a loss, then he had the Marroquin fight, so he's lost his last two. Obviously, the Marroquin fight probably should have gone a different way. Still, he has to grin and bear it, and now he, after winning his 13th fights in amateur and pro, Wants to stem the tide. That'll oh. be easy. Yep. He also has a brother. Uh, Poopy is his name. And uh, he fights and trains with his brother as well. And, uh, you know, when you got a brother that's as high level as Chango has, uh, you can't ask for a better training partner. Look, I'm, I'm just impressed you said Poopy with straight face. I mean, it's different in Spanish, but that is his fight name. His name is uh, Jose Calvo. He's Chango's older brother. But uh, they're really great in the sense that they're Equally same size, and they both get to train together every single day. Oh, good combination, Reyes, and a high kick, almost catching Ch Calvo on the, on the chin. Slowing down the pace of Calvo as he takes the center of the howl, looking for his sweet spot. 
Reyes has it covered. He looks so much more confident than we first saw him back in 2019. Big, huge left hook for Chango. It was a big swing and a miss. And Chango's moving all over the place. He's moving, he's moving. He's trying to get his movement down. Changuito, which translates to a little monkey. Mono, also the word for monkey in Spanish. More slang related in this case. Watch and Javier Reyes just looks like he's waiting for him to yeah. come in. He's yeah. nice and com calm and composed, and he's throwing right down the clown's mouth with nice straight punches that is tagging up Jungle on his way in. Reyes, who's fought in all the big names in Colombian MMA, Andres Ayala, Sean Bedoya, who we've seen here in Combate in years past. That jab hurt Jungle. That was a nice job for Reyes. Ten seconds to go here in round one. Great start for Calvo, but Reyes is dictating terms here as the round wore on. He's a tough guy. He's always looking for a fight. Always. Always. And that's that fighter spirit, that fighter spirit that we love, and that's that fighter spirit that Chungo has. He is a fighter. That fight against Marroquin was in July, and you could see he put so much into it. He was prepared, he had a game plan, and he won the fight. He did win the fight, and he has a lot to prove. He feels like the world is against him. He always feels like he's he's got all the, the chips stacked against him in his favor, and so he's got a lot to prove here. He's really trying to do everything that he can to win this fight, but he's Good coming ride, in Reyes. wide. He's coming in wild, yep. and Reyes is able to read all of his movement before he can even get there, and he's tagging him on his way in, and there's a little mouse swelling up underneath the left eye of Chango, and he's got to be careful coming in wild like that because he's getting tagged by Reyes. Reyes is in a nice groove. Feels like he's in control. Takedown attempt. He flushes that out. Yeah, nicely done by Reyes. Great takedown defense. He said, get off of me. Tail of the tape said they're both five foot eight, but Reyes looks longer in many ways. Yeah, big, huge tomahawk right hand over the top for Chango. Yeah, it's definitely frustrating. Oh. Good straight left catches Calvo it's on the button. Beautiful jab by Reyes. They're catching each time. Nice leg kick by Changuito. He put everything into that one. Combination nice. Reyes. And a little blood from oh that mouse. Gosh. If one of those right hands lands, it's going to be lights out for Reyes. Oh, he got that left one in, and that's built some confidence in Calvo. Reyes knocking that hair back. A fair pin, and oh. that one was flush. Left nice hand is working for Calvo. Nicely done. I think he got the timing right on that one. It's he all did. timing. Overhand left. Maybe he can hide it a little more. Maybe throw a feint and then throw the overhand. Make him bite on a shot first and then throw that overhand. Because it's a little bit telegraphed. Reyes last fought with Combate May in the Superfly event. Beat John Simon there, third round TKO. Beat Joe Neal in Stockton in the previous fight, December 2019, via the rear naked choke. Last two fights. Stockton with Combate. a good fight town. They got anybody nice. there? That I like to call yeah. I like to call Stockton the uh, toughest little city in America. Nice looping left from Chango. We have Warning one of the DS. Shot. Pardon me, Julian. We have one of the Diaz brothers. Uh, Protégé is coming in in the main event in uh, Martin Bravo. Yeah, that was weird. Reyes threw a little bit of like a Mexican uppercut, I will, if you will, to the body of uh, Calvo. Ooh, and he hit him right flush on the face there. And uh, Calvo didn't like it. Comes Reyes back with a flurry. in pursuit. Yep. Calvo's having a nice round here. Really started with that one left hand that put Reyes on his backside. And Reyes said that uh, Cabo was going to lose steam and that he was going to gas himself out. And uh, you're seeing the fight slow down a ton. The pace of the fight is not as high pace, but the intensity is still there because every shot that Chango is throwing is with bad intentions. He's trying to knock you out. He's trying to put you out of your, uh, try to put your lights out. The timing off now for Calvo. That's a. Uh, a major designation here is the takedown attempt snuffed initially here by Calvo. Reyes keeps working up the body. Great hips Listens to for his Calvo. He did not get taken down there. He's doing a great job of staying on his feet. 
big, huge elbow over the top for Reyes, and that was a nice elbow from the break. Reyes, who's training at Ultimate Combat Fitness. You heard about uh, the training he's getting in Arizona. By the way, expecting uh, a baby here soon. Will be a dad? Right, he's got more of an incentive to win, especially because he's going to be a new father. By the way, I got the name wrong of the band that he listens to to hype himself up. It's Sonata Arctica. So go get that on iTunes if you want to check out what Reyes trains to. What does Poopy listen to? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he plays for a heavy metal band called Evil Maniacs. Plays guitar, Reyes. Oh, that's the church I go to. <laughs> Evil Maniacs. It's actually uh, my, my, my bagel place. Back he out hasn't really the cracked open. a sweat here. No, he's nice and composed. He's like, I'm just going to wait for this guy to come to me. Well, it's down to a round now as 15 seconds remain in round two. Stand up all the way here between Calvo and Reyes. Reyes is timing a little bit off, too. Oh, was that after? It was close. No, it, was close, it wasn't intentionally after. Yeah, you're, he, they're fighting. Yeah. Uh, you guys Couple shout outs. The coverage, I just want to say uh, the coverage of that fight, it was a very active fight. Coverage, I mean the camera work, the director's cuts there. That looked great to me. That was a very active fight. Um, and I just like how it looked. It's uh, a tough sport to produce yeah, in the truck. It, it is. Calvo it is. looks like he wants to, it, he's just saying something here. He's, he's shaking his head no. He's telling his corner no. His corner's to me, I don't know. Seems like he's trying to keep him in the fight. Inside leg kick from Reyes. Here we see that teep kick and a jab from Reyes. And, and again, the Reyes. Oh, that until big that, that, I was going to say took Reyes over the top timing looked right better on the button on until there. he got hit there. Yeah, dropped him. And that was that body shot that bothered uh, Galvo. Uh, I'm giving more shout outs. Mike Aframo with yeah, legendary fight's over. Afro. Fight's over. Oh, that you were right. Oh, JP wow. saw that. Yeah, Calvo quits. By necessity, he had that conversation yeah. with the corner, and Reyes will win this after Calvo would not answer the bell for round three. His what a shoulders out, he's saying. We'll see it. We, the, the, we knew this was going to be a crazy one, and it certainly had a, a, an odd finale to it. As we look at the highlights, Reyes was just in his zone and able to fight his fight. And it always seemed, Juliana, that these punches, with the exception of that one, were always out of reach for Calvo. And they were wild. They were a little wide, but you know, sometimes when you hit somebody with a wide punch and knock them out, are you gonna say that it was wrong? No, you're gonna say that was the nastiest knockout I've ever seen. And so sometimes when you come with that level of intensity though, you can't keep that up, you can't maintain that. And that's what we're seeing uh, with uh, Galvo. He wasn't able to maintain that level of intensity. Unfortunately, his shoulder went out or possibly something else happened, I'm not quite sure. We'll find out later, but uh, he is out of the fight. He could not continue into round three. And uh, unfortunately, it's a, it's a sad ending to, to stop the fight like that. But, uh, you know, we wish him the best and uh, speedy recovery. We certainly hope to see him again soon, but now to Lupe. Damas y caballeros, la esquina azul le informa al referee Josh Rutgers que no puede continuar obligándolo a parar la contienda con un tiempo oficial de 4 minutos 59 segundos del segundo episodio. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner informs referee Josh Rutgers he can no longer continue, obligating him to stop this contest with an official time of 4 minutes 59 seconds of round number 2. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, el vencedor por knockout técnico de Colombia. Javier Blair Reyes. 12 and three, his best win to date. And we're getting a lot of feedback from Colombia that are all inviting Juliana Peña for a week down there. We'll see if she can take it up. But Javier Reyes holding the flag for Colombia with pride. De la Ciudad de México, DF, Irlanda. Fui con todo y le gané por una semana.
selección. Y de todos modos, aunque haya ganado la pelea, yo seguí entrenando para mejorar mucho mi strike. Vamos a dar guerra y pues estoy lista. Continuamos con mucha más acción. El duelo coestelar de la noche. Tres vueltas, división peso paja. We continue with much more action. Our co-featured bout, three rounds in the straw weight division. Los jueces, the judges. Richard Green Jr., Héctor Gómez y James Lázaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, vestida de negro, in the blue corner, wearing black, su peso oficial, 114 libras y un cuarto, her official weight, 114 and one quarter pounds, con un record profesional de cinco victorias y cinco derrotas, with a pro record of five victories against five losses, representando a Santiago de Chile, Gloria, Gloriosa Bravo. En la esquina roja, vestida de rojo in the red corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 114 libras y media. Her official weight, 114 and one half pounds. Esta noche, regresa a la jaula por segunda ocasión con una victoria. Tonight, she returns to la jaula for the second time with a record of one victory. De la ciudad de México, DF, Irlanda, Calici Galindo. El referee, Alan Abeles. Alan Abeles. The instructions in the locker the room will be my like commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out, fight. Judge. 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 Here we go. So Galindo is even going with the Kalisa, Kalisi nickname, and it of course is Daenerys Targaryen, who was the character. Let's see if she can breathe some fire on Bravo. Southpaw is Galindo in the red trunks, Bravo in the black. And right away, the thing that jumps off at me is five and five as a pro record and one and oh as a pro record for Galindo, whose career is literally, literally in its infancy stage. So to fight somebody with that much more experience than you jumps off the page to me is like, wow, this girl's, uh, she's tough and she's got guts to fight somebody who has, you know, way more experience than she does. Missed there by Galindo, who is in red. Fifth combate fight for Gloriosa Bravo. Before beating Jay Duran, she lost to Ana Palacios via the key lock in July of 2021. Beat Paulina Granados, fought Super Meli. That was back in 2017. Looking to raise the standard for Chilean fighters. We saw Eduardo Torres two weeks ago as well on that card. He was unbeaten, ended up losing to Nogelin Hernandez. Bravo. Chilean's got some good fighters. Pablo Villaseca, remember seeing him, one of the Copa Combates. Here in the Southern Cone. Bravo looks lean and mean, and oh. a straight right drops Galindo oh. back to her feet. Irlanda Galindo beat Mariah Mila versus rear naked choke second round. That was August the 1st. Bravo has a really calm, composed type of striking, being able to see everything. Nice and straight punches. She's real calm in there. She's got a background in karate. And she just looks like a flow, there's a flow in there, and she's just flowing, she's doing a great job. Very comfortable, and those are the benefits. We talk about taking a fight in, in a three-week span, and obviously it's tough to get ramped up again, depending how much punishment she took, she did it. But she even mentioned to us earlier, Julian, she goes right, it feels like she went into another camp, and she looks right really away. sharp. Yeah. See, the thing what I saw about Yolanda in her first fight with us is um, she didn't come to lose. And you really have to beat her. And she got a double body lock takedown, but it gets oh, her mounted. Mount. Nicely done. Galindo with the decision balanced. to make here. Bravo can finish the fight from here. Bravo 
continues to punch. Galindo tries to shake her off. Purple belt in jiu-jitsu, Gloria Bravo has full mount. Needs to be careful that Galindo doesn't use the fence to cage walk. Well, she's got a good control of her. She has put the anchor down. You can hear Christian Barraza urging elbow, her on. Elbow. Told her to take her time. And there are the forearms and elbows dropping down on Galindo, who is in survival mode. Galindo Gives up her back. Giving up her back, and if she squares up her hips, she will be on top. And this is what happened in her last fight. She was getting fully mounted, but now, now Gloria Bravo's attempt. got a rear naked choke attempt in there. And uh, she can finish this fight from here. Galindo just needs to square her hips up, and she'll be on top like what happened with her last fight with Mariah Miller. Galindo's been pretty smart here, Juliana, for only one fight. That's only three amateur fights. She's 18. You expect her to make mistakes. So far, she's avoided any major traps. Yeah, absolutely. And I was saying that. Ten fights to her one Watch fight, Galindo. And this could be over Watch from here. Now, Bravo's still trying to reach around and Rear do some damage. Choke. Drops the chin, does Galindo. And Galindo needs to put her back to the mat and uh, get this choke off. But uh, that's tight, and Gloria Bravo is doing a great job ooh, using those ooh. hips to She's stretch her to... out. Oh, still, Galindo can breathe, obviously, and she can still manage as she tries to punch. Just don't want to shift into the wrong position. And uh, she's getting deeper and deeper into that choke. She really needs to put her back, both shoulder blades, on the howler floor if she wants to get out of this choke. Under a minute to go in this opening round. That didn't look that deep to me, JP. Boy, do I hate it's, to it's contradict It's getting deeper you. and deeper, <laughs> Careful. though. Careful. <laughs> And uh, Galindo's doing a good job of hand fighting, but she really, oh, and she's got a body triangle on there, Gloria Bravo. One last squeeze here, 30 seconds. And that body triangle is, you know, 90% of that choke, but she does have her feet crossed, which- Now it's underneath the chin. Now it's in deeper, Galindo throwing some punches. She's got to survive for 20 seconds. Her face is turning red. Stretch, use that, use those legs. Oh, she's just going to shift out, I think. And this is seconds. literally what we saw in the fight last time happening with Galindo. That'll be it. First round. Wow. We'll be back for round number two. Saved by the foul. We are back here ahead of round number two. Lessons learned, no doubt, for Ilanda Galindo. Did pretty well in that submission defense. Clearly, Gloria Bravo, one-way traffic for her in that first round. Now round two. Galindo needs to make these adjustments into round two, and she's got to implement her own will here. Big, huge, wild punches. Gloria sees it. She's nice and straight. Circling the jaula. Looking to get her offense going, really, for the first time tonight. She's so young, 18 years old, going up against a girl with, you know, nine more fights than her. She's She's got guts, that's for sure. And we saw this in her last fight. Her last fight, she was getting beat. Rounds one, round two, round three, she came back and she literally choked the girl out with a rear naked choke of her own. So she's not out of this fight. She's tough, she's young, she's durable, she's hungry. And uh, she can still win this fight, but Gloria Bravo is just doing a great job of stalking. Her punches are nice and straight. And you can just see that so far everywhere the fight goes, Gloria is ahead. Bravo with a background of karate, something she has carried with her throughout her entire combat career. Into the clinch, and Gloria pinned up against the fence. Gloria is a favorite of Combate because, one, we love Chile. The other thing is she's had a tough struggle outside of La Hala. Her biggest fights have come from some stuff that life has thrown at her. So we all root for her. Yes, yeah, yeah. some bad cards dealt, doesn't complain, certainly picks up. Her confidence here. Doesn't complain and has such a great attitude. Sweetheart, heart of gold. Great take takedown defense so far by Bravo. But she's got to be careful that Galindo doesn't lock her hands and pull her off the fence and take her down like what happened in round one. I mean, their, their, their body types are so different, JP. It looks yes. like Irlanda could Stop. really... Yep. Yes, Gloria Bravo, long, tall, lean, using her length very well. 
Back to action here, moving towards the halfway point of round two. Not much in that kick from Galindo. Nope, but a nice one-two from Gloria Bravo. Yeah. Galindo's got a little more starch than those strikes. Bravo is a striker through and through. Even though she showed some good ground game there in that first round. She is a purple belt, and she won her last fight round one by armbar, so she's got a great ground game. Fainting some punches. Galindo Nicely looking done. to counter punch. Nicely done by Galindo. Inside leg kick Better. by Galindo. And she said, I, I won my fight by ruining a choke. I went straight back to the gym, and I started working on my striking, and that's what you're seeing here by Galindo. Galindo, who turned pro April 22nd. So she's been at it for grand total of what, four months. Just finished high school. Overhand right, pushes Bravo into the cage. Nice knee, beautiful knee by Gloria Bravo, and she gets a single leg attempt from Galindo, but nice hips, beautiful hips, and gets turns around, takes the back. This is the strongest I've seen Gloria. Totally. Yeah, she really looks good to me. She looks fit too, just eyeball yeah. test. Yes. And she really looks like a She's winning this fight handedly. Nice knee from Gloria Bravo. She's down. In the strawweight division here, both coming in under 115 pounds. She's got to get that leg right in. Her left leg needs to come inside. Work, Gloria. What was it that uh, Galindo said? You're not going to leave here, Glorioso? Uh, because Bravo's uh, nickname is Glorioso, and she says you're not going to be Glorioso after this fight. But uh, looks like she is. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Galindo buckled underneath, has been on the receiving end of the duration of this fight. Gloria Bravo, get a hook in. Get a hook in. Yeah, you got to see that killer instinct here from Bravo. Yeah, no, she needs to put that left leg and, and leg ride and get a, get a hook in to continue to push, keep her down. Nicely done by Galindo to face her opponent. Gets the high ground. Beautiful head position by Gloria Bravo. 30 seconds here to go here in round number two. Bravo won the first, winning the second. There is Christian Barasa. And I didn't recognize him at first, but actually we worked out in the gym together this morning. This afternoon, excuse me. He must have been in the gym there all day, or I missed you for a few minutes. I saw him there on the tail for a very short stint at the gym for me. It was <laughs> 30 minutes. Yeah. Tops. Nicely done, nice knee by Gloria Bravo. Careful not to get taken down here. Oh, Galindo's hanging around. That's something as she gets ready for round three. Last round, we are back. You can see the damage on that right eye of Galindo. And Gloria Bravo comes out for round number three, looking to finish the deal. Gloria Bravo in black. And you can hear Christian Barrasso even say, disfrútalo, enjoy it. Oh, Plenty oh. of punches, Galindo walks right into that. Falls into Bravo. Beautiful knee, too, on that fall. Bravo looking for an underhook, and Galindo desperate to take her down. Galindo with some natural strength there. You can see wedges herself in, and Bravo feels it. Yeah, and trying she's to toss her. Trying to use her strength, her physical strength, to take, get her taken down. But Gloria Bravo, hip to the game. She's got great balance, great takedown defense. And, uh, this is good for Galindo. She's found something she could work on. Yeah. Looking for a single leg. Pull it out. You're going to do it. Pull it out. That's not a resting position. You're going to get choked. Nicely done by Gloria Bravo, trying to improve yeah. her head position. Bravo with a lot of the Queen of Dragon hair in her mouth for a second there. Nowhere to go. Khaleesi needs a call on all her dragons here. <laughs> Gloria's looked really good, really good. Everything she's done is very purposeful. Right. Nicely done by Gloria to pick that head up of Galindo. And Galindo is like a dog on a bone. She is not going to separate. But unfortunately, Raul Barata separates them, and back into the open they go. That was uh, not active enough for Galindo. She was moving, but Elena Vera saw enough, and now we get in there. Bravo starting to fire away. Not as much starch in those punches and better defending from Galindo, but she's lost the first two. That was close, 
hasn't really swollen up too much. She walks right into that again. Yep. And Gloria Bravo has nice straight punches. Galindo needs to move her head a little bit. Get your or, head off. Or keep the hands up, yeah. one or the other. Get your head off the of center. Don't don't come in at her straight away like that. You, you, you got to disguise it a little more. Big overhand from Galindo. Back into the clinch they go. And she's got underhook on the left. I can't tell if her got double underhooks there. Let me see. Now Galindo again, doing well in this third round. Far and away her best, but Bravo's not budging. Double underhooks for Galindo again. She's trying desperately to take her down. Nice throw by, and she finally gets it. Nicely done. Now she's got something. <laughs> and now a warning from the ref towards Bravo, who has to deal with the side control. Galindo has plenty of time to come up with something. Has to finish this fight. This is uh, exactly what happened to Galindo in her last fight, literally. She turned it around in the last couple minutes of her last fight in round three, and she has the opportunity to do the same exact thing here. But Gloria Bravo has got some awesome jujitsu, and Galindo and needs to be careful. much more experienced than uh, Erlanda's opponent that last fight. Yes, but she, she does need to get off of her back here, but... Uh, Win, loser, draw for Galindo. She shows some fight to we love her. stood around here and we now be in a position to possibly steal it. Dropping those hammer blows. Going for broke here, Galindo on top, dropping the hammer fist, trying to get some action going. And she's got to be careful because the guard of Gloria Bravo, she's about to get armbarred, guys. Stretch out, keep going Maybe underneath that leg. Maybe Bravo able to finish here. 45 seconds to go, Galindo. She's hitting Gloria with her own knee. That is something a little different. They all, it all scores. She is deep in an arm bar, and, and Gloria Bravo's just got to stretch out. Keep going underneath there. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. You got it. She is, Galindo is deep. She is in trouble here. But as long as she can survive the last 20 seconds like this, she'll be good. As long as she doesn't get stretched out, she'll be fine. Bravo bent over, but now she knows just the clock is her friend. Work it down. 10 seconds to go in this final round. She is caught in a double. Wow, that's pretty good from Bravo. Go for it. Pool. Not a comfortable position Pool. for Galindo. Pool, she Pool. might be in trouble, but the bell is there. Nicely done. Quick look at the stats and look at the strikes from Bravo. Pops off the screen and takedowns. Not much in the game, although a successful one finally for Galindo. But it would appear the damage was done from Gloria Bravo. But for the official decision, let's go to Lupe Contreras. El juez James Lazaro anotó 30 a 27. Judge Lazaro scores it 30 to 27. Y los jueces Gomez y Green Jr. entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. Judges Gomez and Green Jr. turn in identical scores of 29 to 28. A favor de la vencedora, por decisión unánime, in favor of the winner, by way of unanimous decision. Gloriosa! Gloria! Bravo! Well, it was all worth it. Three weeks, two wins, and now a winning record with the Chilean flag over her shoulders. And that sets the table for the final fight. Andrew the Beast Whitney looking to change the narrative as he faces Martin El Toro Bravo. Main event time is next. And uh, as Campbell was touching on talking to Michael Fromwitz and Tony Padilla, it's all about Martin Bravo. This was the guy who was supposed to main event it. And then you have Andrew Whitney, sometimes nicknamed the Beast, sometimes nicknamed Sir, has been through a lot. This is his 26th professional bout, highs and lows, sat out the entire 2020, and now representing the great state of Missouri. He uh, looks to 
knock Bravo off his perch and be the last man standing this evening. Representing a lot of things, including the United States here tonight, Andrew Whitney. Do we know where Andrew's from in Missouri? Or is Kansas, say he had Missouri. the Chiefs mass. He could be Kansas City, Kansas. Could be Kansas City, Kansas. We'll get could, to the bottom be, of it. Uh, East St. Louis. Could be. Last fought August 2021. 20, Been in the fight game as a professional since 2010 as we, 10, as we go head to head. Height advantage one inch via Bravo and a decisive reach advantage. I'm sure we will see it in living color here shortly. Now let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este es el duelo estelar de la noche. Tres vueltas, división peso pluma. This is the main event. Three rounds in the featherweight division. Los jueces, the judges, Byron Sellers, Richard Green Jr. y Héctor Gómez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestido de negro, introducing the blue corner, wearing black, su peso oficial, 145 libras y tres cuartos, his official weight, 145 and three quarter pounds. En su décimo quinto combate a nivel profesional, con 11 victorias y tres derrotas. En his 15th professional bout, with 11 victories against three losses, representando a Rosarito, Baja California, México, Martín. El Toro Bravo. En la esquina roja, vestido de azul, in the red corner, wearing blue, su peso oficial, 145 libras y tres cuartos, he weighed in at an identical 145 and three quarter pounds. Entra por vigésima sexta vez a la jaula, con 16 victorias y nueve derrotas. He enters the jaula for the 26th time as a professional, with 16 victories against nine losses, hailing from Kansas City, Missouri, and fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Sir Andrew Whitney. El referee, Josh Rutgers. Josh Rutgers, the third inside the house. We already went over the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. Other than that, protect yourself at all times. Listen to me at all times. Do everything you can within the rules to win. Best of luck. God bless, gentlemen. Back to the corners. Wait for the bell. Josh Rutgers sounds a little bit like Sam Elliott, the actor. He's got that southern drawl, that Texan drawl. It's very becoming. Here we go. Is the hype for real? Has not fought since September 2019. El Toro Bravo. While at UFC, fought Humberto Bandenay. We know here in Combate, also Alex Caceres. Now, seeing how he sizes up here in another major promotion, Combate Global. Early activity, catches a right hand from Whitney. Bravo in the black. Big overhand rights for Whitney. Oh, he's got a haymaker of that right hand. He does, that's a hammer. Second Bravo we're seeing here compete tonight. Nice left hook from Whitney. Plenty of work in Bravo's career. Had five amateur kickboxing fights, 12 amateur MMA fights, and now, this is his 15th professional MMA fight. Great takedown defense by Bravo. But he gets a big flurry of hooks left and right from Whitney on the way out. Can't keep getting caught by that short right of Whitney. And yeah, it's a beautiful uppercut from Bravo. Bravo is laying in now. Whitney's looking to survive. Whitney's hurt and the fight's over. Over in a minute and 10 seconds, El Toro. What an uppercut. We call that the uppercut from hell. Wow. <laughs> and he ran him over happened. on the way down. I didn't, didn't, I didn't say it. I didn't Come up? on. I know he's excited, but he almost. Stockton, baby. First round TKO for El Toro Bravo. There was that short uppercut that just put Whitney out. Heard him good. Bang, right on the chin. 
after the fight, he kept saying, this is my life. Had a great moment with his corner. It was a good start by Whitney, but that one changed everything. He covered up. Stopped there by Josh Rutgers. Fight over. Good stoppage. Great stoppage. They should have stopped him from jumping onto his opponent afterwards, though. Almost rolled into him. And let's get the official decision inside the Haola. El voz. referee Josh Rutgers detiene el combate con un tiempo oficial de un minuto, nueve segundos del primer episodio. Referee Josh Rutgers stopped this contest with an official time of one minute, nine seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of TKO, el vencedor por knockout técnico de México, el toro, Martín Bravo. TKO now 12 and 3, and we have another player in the Combate Featherweight division at 145 pounds. We'll be back with Mucho Más Acción. We are back. Bonus action here as we will go into the flyweight division. Santiago Monreal representing Mexicali, Mexico. Christopher Daniel representing the U.S. and Haiti. Los jueces on the judges are Hector Gomez, James Lazaro, and Byron Sellers. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, vestido de negro con verde y rojo, introducing the blue corner, wearing black with green and red trim, his official weight, 105 and 3 quarter pounds, su peso oficial, 125 libras y 3 cuartos, entra por séptima ocasión a la jaula, con cuatro victorias y dos derrotas, he enters la jaula for the seventh time as a pro, with four victories against two losses, puro Chicali, Baja California, Mexico, Santiago, Monreal. Su oponente en la esquina roja, vestido de rojo, is opponent in the red corner, wearing red. Detuvo la báscula, un peso oficial de 126 libras. He tipped the scales at an official 126 pounds. Su récord profesional, cinco victorias, dos derrotas y un empate. His professional record, five victories, two losses, and one bout even. Fighting out of Miramar, Florida, Christopher. Steven Daniel, our referee, Josh Rutgers. Josh Rutgers, third inside the jaula. I love how Lupe says Miramar, Florida. Miramar, which is a proper the pronunciation. If there's any questions, he, he ask them now. If not, everything he that's says luck. sounds God bless, better. touch him up, back to the corner, wait for the instructions. Everything That's why he is better. La Voz. Out of La Voz. Judge is ready. Judge is ready. Fantastic Judge evening is ready. here for Combate Global. It's ended up in style. Santiago Monreal from Mexicali, which has been a great fight town for us at Combate. He's in the green and red shorts. He started his career 3-0, but he's lost his last two. So he needs to, as they say, stop the rod against Christopher Daniel. Christopher Daniel last fought in August 2001. That was just a short time ago and a gigantic double leg takedown attempt from Christopher Daniel. But he has that body lock, he still has it. Monreal holding the head, that is not the thing you want to do. Daniel came out with a Haitian flag, 3-1-1 one one in his MMA career. His victories have come via KO, TKO, and a verbal submission. So, doesn't go the distance when he wins. Monreal. Uh, what is a uh, verbal submission? No mas. <laughs> I think. Is really? that right? Is that I can't go anymore? Verbal submission is like, ah! Get off of me, I'm done. Like if you literally scream, that's I mean, a verbal submission. Like I, I think I literally created the sport. I, 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 would, I, just, I, just, I just read what they put in front of me. That's pretty much my extent of the... I thought maybe his opponent talked him into quitting. <laughs> I quit. I, I'm, I'm going out. to reach into your soul and destroy any hope you have <laughs> of a better life. I, 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 Let's I go with that. <laughs> Christopher Daniel had a beautiful takedown here against Monreal. But Monreal, great hips, nice strength from Monreal. He reverses the position. Very proud to fight during Mexican Independence Month. 
which is September. Nicely done by Monreal to reverse his position. Christopher Daniels got to get up. Nice underhook. Beautiful job by Christopher Daniels to find his way back to his feet, looking for another body lock takedown. Let's see if he pulls him off the fence. A lot of good flyweights in uh, combate. These two would love to be considered amongst them one step at a time. Monreal was on his way after his incredible start. Last beat Eber Castillo, but then lost to Gabriel Valdez September 2019. Lost to Ernesto Ibarra February of 2020. That last two fights, both via decision. Yeah, Monreal, uh, excuse me, Christopher Daniels deep on a body lock takedown. Look to see him complete this takedown here. And uh, Monreal holding on to the head, holding on to the outside elbow, looking for a judo throw, but unfortunately, it's not going to work. Wrist control done by Christopher Daniel around the back. And that's an uncomfortable position you don't want to be in. He gets him taken down, gets the backpack taken on. Now in a position for a rear naked, although he's underneath Monreal. Yep, that's where the rear naked comes. And uh, Christopher Daniel reaching over for that shoulder. Nice wrist control by Christopher Daniel looking to finish this rear naked choke. Still working, two minutes, under two minutes to go in this opening round. Monreal has got to stop the body triangle. He's got to break it where it starts and that would be on R as the viewer left side. Daniel, the father of three. Is Daniel's work in this rear naked choke. Still at it, persevering. He has the triangle underneath. Yep. And now he's got, he's cooking with gas here. Look out, Monreal is between a rock and a hard place. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. That's right, Max, and that's deep. And now the hook in, and it looks pretty bad for Monreal. Daniel with the rear naked he choke can attempt. Still finish it one handed. Impressive here from Daniel. Activate those legs. Nicely done by Monreal. At least he's not at a threat of getting choked anymore, but he is fully mounted. He gave up his back again. You got to shake him off the top, or you got to get hips. your guard back. And Daniel's big, heavy punches. And he's got that lock underneath via the triangle in. Let's it go there. 45 seconds to go. Nicely done by Monreal. He's not getting choked anymore. He's almost a full guard. He's at guard now. Nicely done by Monreal. Downstairs, upstairs with the punches. Body, body, head. It's working. Now Monreal's got a good of a squeeze on. If he can get out of this first round, reassess things in between rounds one and two. 20 seconds. Daniel pivots higher. Nice donkey kick from Monreal. Got the Heel hook for Christopher Daniel. Oh, Monreal's tapping. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Outside heel hook for Christopher Daniel. That's it. First round finished by submission. That was nasty. Your winner. By way of submission, el vencedor por sumisión, D. Van, Christopher Daniel. Congrats. We're out of time. On behalf of everyone here, Campbell, Juliana, Max Pretos, peace, peace, reminding you, fighting. Placido Domingo, no Fridays off.